What's going on guys? It is currently Saturday, May 23rd. I'm out in the garage. Hot as hell day. Finally something I've been trying to do all week. I've been lazy. I finally got my bad headlights swapped out for the Colorado. I got some fresh LED units in here. On the car, I have been making way with the checklist. I did the starter wire. I basically took the wire I had coming out to the starter. I put a relay and then now I have a wire going to the starter. So I have a 14 gauge from a relay now. So that is good. So I checked that off. Back pressure line, I did make a new one. I used, like I said, the copper nickel braid brake line again, except I used steel fittings this time. So this is the old back pressure line right here. So this is the side that saw the, on this side by the fitting. And then, like I said, this side, the flare sleeve was there, but the nut disappeared, which I thought was kind of funny. So that's taken care of, that's crossed off. Trans temp sensor, like I said before, that has been recalibrated and adjusted. The blinkers, that's, that's kind of a funny story. So that's finished and the radio is finished. So we pulled the dash out. I wired in the radio, which I don't know if you guys have seen it before, but right there I have a sound bar. And then also the ARC panel is mounted up here. So all the wiring is now run down the pillar, like so, down there, everything's tied in. I even put my glove box in finally. So when I was wiring the car, um, I kind of screwed up. I ran, I, I kind of used trailer coloring on the wiring. So like left is yellow, right is green for trailer wiring. So I just did it the same on the car. Well, when I ran the wire to the front part of the chassis, I accidentally flopped the colors. So behind the dashboard, there's terminal boards where all the wiring is connected. And I matched the color for color, forgetting the fact that I put them on the wrong side. So like if you click the left blinker, the front right would work and the back left would work and then vice versa. So that has been corrected finally. Um, and then radio, like I said, the radio is wired up. I am so happy. So probably the best investment I ever made with the four cylinder is I mean, yes, it's cool, like race cars, no radio, but it does get kind of boring when you don't have a radio. So I'm going to play a very short clip of something. That way I don't get copyrighted. But yeah, the dashboard opens and closes. Got everything else situated in here. I decided to add another button on here. So this one I have to get a sticker for, but this is going to be for scramble. So in the case someone runs me down, <laughs> I got four more pounds of boost I'm willing to throw at it. So I'm happy that this is actually mounted finally. It's nice and secure, so it works just great. And like I said, this is the radio. So I'm gonna go on my phone real quick and let's play like four seconds of something. Uh, that's a good song, very good song. So it is very loud. But it, since it's right above my head, all right, that's good enough. Lauren Babick, ah, she's a good singer. That's a good cover too. But it is right here. The only downside is it, it is kind of flimsy with the mounting. So maybe one day I'll shim it so it doesn't have that play. But nonetheless, I'm happy to have that back. I'm happy this is mounted up here. The interior is finally done. Like I said, all that stuff is run. I'm sure if you saw my track video, you saw me fumbling around with this thing because I had it down here for a little while, but yep, the interior is now complete. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is disconnect my air shifter. Oh, I'm in here because next weekend, that 1050 class does not allow air shifters. So what we will do is we'll pull the vacuum line off of here. My goodness gracious, hold on. Hold on one sec. Let's pull this vacuum line off. All right, so now vacuum line's disconnected from there. Let's see if I can get it off of there with one hand because these shark bite fittings are a pain in the ass. All right, so the vacuum line is now off. So just so I don't lose it, I'm gonna let it back here. And then you see the solenoids unplugged, so there you go. I know people are probably still gonna give me shit because this is still mounted, but I don't know where I put the other brackets so I can't swap it over easily. So anywho, this is now my completed interior. Custom air vent by Hutch. Custom carbon panels by a friend, Tarek. And Keith made my center console a long time ago. I have a uh, 
USB charger, a 1 amp and a 2.1 amp, because I didn't think to buy a fast charge. So my switch is in here. You have, this is the dimmer, on, dim off, data logger, burnout mode, which basically just sets another RPM limiter while I do a burnout, active traction control. The last one is rolling start, which is actually rolling anti-lag. This one's scramble. These two I'm not using, and then, like I said, that's the dimmer. Up here, I have headlights. I got left blinker, right blinker. I got that switch right here. This is the line lock, so I hold it. I press the brakes, and my brakes are now stuck to the floor. So that's that. And then up here, starter, fuel pump, fans, water pump, intercooler fans, trans cooler fans not being used and then this is the horn so i got a lot of switches in here but hey it is a race car i guess so that is my little quick interior tour but i'm excited it's finally all coming together so i think miggy uh said he was coming over tonight to help me with the head gaskets if he doesn't come then i'm just gonna put the car back together myself hopefully he pulls through and then also hopefully he uh, comes racing with us next weekend. So there's nothing more I want in my entire life than to match up with your best friend in an elimination match. That to me is like, that's goals. I don't care if it's a 15-0 a index, but that to me would be fun. So, but yeah, we got a, a lot of progress done in the car. I'm sorry I didn't film any of it. John came over. He was very helpful and helped me help my crippled ass get some stuff done. Um, I did get the drive shaft collar for the rear end. So that is up next on the chopping block. And then the only other thing left on the list is the head gasket. So productive day. And I'm sweating like crazy. It's hot. And just like that, the old sensor ring is off. But one thing you'll notice is uh, I guess it made contact with the sensor. I know the sensor did read, so I'm not worried about the sensor being faulty. But you can see it here. Now it's got the different style trigger ring and it is gapped to 40 thousands. So that should be good. So I did end up making these bushings up top in Delrin, you can see the top ones. I made those in Delrin hoping that the diff wouldn't move under load, but it seems to be that it did move. So I'm going to have to get them made out of aluminum so oh, let's pray that my let's pray that my sensor makes it through next weekend or if i can get somebody to machine me aluminum bushing sooner i'll do that but i actually have the other ones here so realistically all i need is four of these made in aluminum and then i'd be in good shape so but yeah so now let's do something very satisfying grab a sharpie so now the only thing left on my weekend list is head gaskets and hopefully like i said miggy will come through oh i did also finally crack down and buy a plug kit for my hoses this is something i should have bought many 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 years ago but i finally got a set and i'm happy Ooh, almost ready Mickey did come over last night. We got the head gaskets on. The only thing uh, left I had to do was I had to get another valve cover gasket because I guess the old one didn't fit. So this guy, I've got this on now. I just kind of put a couple corners of super glue. That way this doesn't fall when I try to put it on because it seems to be. But everything on this side is tied up. Plug wires, breathers, everything. And then this side, like I said, all I got left to do is that. So, we rock it and rolling. Got the ARP bolts in, torqued them down, 28 on the top, and then we did 85 on the big ones. And yeah. So, old turtle is getting ready to be finished. I'm going to have to do an oil change. So, I did pick up the nice VR1 Raveline and then my Wix filter. So I am ready for my second oil change. 
And uh, yeah, I'll do that when I get home from work tonight. And then other than that, once I button up the engine, do the oil change, I think we are good to go for Bradenton. So I got the valve cover on, I got the cold packs on. My machinist asked me to do a compression test just to verify everything is good. And so I just finished the compression test. We have 185, 185 all the way down. And the only variances were five and eight, which isn't that big of a deal. So this is just stone cold, but we're all good. So. I'm gonna slap it back together and put new uh, fresh spark plugs in it, and then we are good to go for Bradenton. I am excited as all hell, as long as it doesn't rain. Then I'll be even more excited, so. All is good in the neighborhood, so. <sighs> yep, back together with the new head gaskets, the ARP studs, and I think we are ready to rock and roll. Um, I finally found an alternative, or actually I found a solution for my back pressure issues. So throw down in the comments what you think I'm doing to fix the back pressure. I'm not gonna give any hints just yet, but I can definitely tell you it's going to be a big surprise. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you later.